Well, welcome everybody. Welcome to live here at Connection Church and whoever is watching on live stream or watching this later on. I am Barry Bickner. I'm part of the teaching and equipping team. I also serve as the worship and tech director here. Um, and this is, today was probably the first service I've ever sat in for a very, very long time. That worship was amazing. Like, absolutely amazing. Like, wow, wow. Um, usually I'm up here playing a guitar, and it's amazing. And just sitting in the front row and being able to just soak it in and not having to play and worry about all the schematics of everything on top of it all, has, it was just amazing. It was great. So, all right, so the last few weeks we've talked about our core values here at Connection Church. Um, two weeks ago, Autumn preached on... Well, three weeks ago. Yeah, cause it's, yeah, three weeks ago. Three weeks ago, Autumn preached on Jesus. It's all about Jesus. That's the first uh, value of Connection Church is it's all about Jesus. And then core value number two, Jason talked about the other six days. It's what's, what, what are you doing Monday through Saturday? Not, it's not just about what's going on on Sunday. And the last week, Joy talked about personal growth. And this week, I will be discussing our last core value, which is big hearts over big church. But I'm going to kind of go through it within a different lens. Um, I had a sermon uh, written, and I was able to take this idea of big hearts over big church and rope it into this. So there's a lot to unpack, uh, a lot to unpack here. And... What I wanted to do is take those three core values that were spoken about earlier this month and this core value and kind of put them all into a nice little box with a nice little bow. So, but before I get to that, how many of you like team sports? Raise your hand. Team sports, baseball, football, basketball, hockey, stuff like that, all right. Audience participation, can anybody name any dynasties of any kind of sports? Shout them out if you can, Remember if you know of any. Packers, Packers okay. Cowboys. Cowboys, Bulls, yep. So a couple I had uh, written down was Yankees, UCL, uh, UCLA men's basketball team, the Chicago Bulls, New England Patriots, those are a few. There have been many great teams in the history of sports spreading across all platforms. They have set records, they've awed spectators, and won championships. But they all have something in common. You know what that is? They're unified. They're all unified, aiming for the same goal, supporting each other along the way. They played as a team. They encouraged each other, they comforted each other in times of need, they hung out with each other, and they demonstrated compassion with one another. So to bring this all full circle, can you recall a moment when this level of unity played a significant role in your faith? Maybe it was a prayer or worship service, or a church picnic. What about a small group, or even a charity event? Or maybe what you've been seeing for the last month or so here at Connection Church. Unity isn't some just some nice idea, it's the heartbeat of our faith journey. It's the heartbeat of this church. And this idea of unity has been on my mind since about June 2022. So before June 2022, it's probably like March of 2022, I heard this still small voice that said, just come. And for a few months, I just kept hearing it, and I didn't really kind of fully understand what that meant until June 2022. So I was taking a walk at my lunch break, and God led me to a Bible verse, which I will be discussing at the end of this sermon. And it was about unity. And that word unity struck me. And as I was walking, I remember the day, I remember the temperature, I remember everything about it. But it was, as I was walking, it was kind of like what Pastor Christine was saying when she got pushed forward by the angel. It was kind of almost similar to that situation where I just felt it. And it was a pivotal moment that I will never forget. I, was, I felt like I had jolts of energy, three of them, shoot into my whole entire body. And I just started crying. I never cried over a Bible verse before. But I cried over a Bible verse. 
And I was like, but the thing was, I felt like I caught a glimpse of God's heart. I caught a vision at that moment. So that brings us to where we're at today. So I felt God was talking to me about Philippians 2, 1 through 2, and that reads, Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort from his love? Any fellowship together in the Spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and purpose. And this is the lens I will be discussing our last core value with in unity. It's all about how we can live these qualities of encouragement, comfort, fellowship, and tender and compassionate hearts out in everyday lives, in our homes, and throughout our communities, not just inside these church walls. And if we're going to be a unified body, a unified church, I do not think we can have that without having a big heart, especially one that scales beyond the walls of this church and of this building. So that leads me to my first point. Is there any encouragement? The definition of encouragement is to inspire with courage, spirit, and hope. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, So encourage each other and build each other up just as you are already doing. Romans 15.5 says, May God who gives this patience and encouragement help you live in complete harmony with each other as it is fitting for the followers of Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 13.11 says, Encourage each other. Ephesians 4.29 says that your words may, will be an encouragement to those who hear them. So we are meant to encourage each other, to inspire, not tear down or use negative language. And I know it can be hard because the times we're living in and life just has a way of being you know, negative or a drudgery sometimes. It can definitely derail us and it pulls us out of alignment. But as the, the Romans 15.5 said, God encourages us. So in order to encourage each other, we need to be seeking God first so he can fill our cup. Because belonging to Christ brings encouragement. And it's a daily practice, not just a Sunday morning thing. So we talked about the other six days. You just can't come here to be encouraged and filled up and then live Monday through Saturday feeding off of Sunday. Because you don't eat once a week. You'll get sick, you'll probably be unhealthy. So life gets us down when you reach a job, you have family issues or whatever is going on. Monday through Saturday, life is just banging on, banging on your door, smacking you across the head. So it needs to happen on a daily basis where you are being encouraged by God and stepping into his word. So does belonging to Christ bring encouragement? Absolutely, of course it does. So what ways does God encourage us? Obviously, feeling his presence. Like, the worship today. He was here. Like, it was insane. Like, that was great. It's through this heartfelt, authentic worship. And in your own prayer room. Matthew 6, Jesus talks about prayer. And going into your room, and closing the door, and spending time with God. That is where you meet him. In your own prayer closet. Not on the streets, in your own prayer closet. And that's where you begin to read the Bible and get in the Word. Those are just a few ways that God can encourage us just on our own. So as our cup gets filled through our prayer and worship time with God and spending time in His Word, let us be reminded in what ways we can encourage and pour into others. So you can't pour into others with an empty cup. So you have to, you have, to have God fill your own cup. You have to have God fill your cup for you. And one way you can encourage others and pour into others is prayer support. Physically pray with others. If you cannot pray for them physically, let them know you're doing so from a distance. And a side note, actually pray for them. Not just say, praying, you know, on Facebook. Somebody says, hey, I need prayer. Praying. No, physically pray for them. Because there is something, there's something amazing about the Spirit of God that if you're praying in the Spirit, that's going to touch that person where they're sitting. We can also encourage others by affirmations and reminders. Reaffirm God's faithfulness in their lives, their tr character traits, their dedication, and saying thank you can go a long way. And offer hope and share your story. And that's why we do these redemption stories here, because it offers hope. Somebody might be going through something that's similar or going through something that's just a little bit, um, 
you know, just they're going through things. And sharing your story really could offer an avenue of hope for somebody. And celebrate milestones. You know, intentionally honor major events in each other's lives. This may include anniversaries, their recovery journey, baptisms, salvation, missions accomplishments, healings, or even a legacy of faith. And that moves us on to our next topic, or our next section. Is there any comfort from his love? Comfort means to console, to come alongside with, or to help. 2 Corinthians 1, 3, 4, 3 through 4 says, God is our merciful Father and source of all comfort. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. And when they are troubled, we will be built we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. And Psalm 34, 18 says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. The comfort from God's love gives us a sense of inner peace, security, and healing. We experience this when we understand and grab hold of the love that he has for us. This is where it moves from your head to your heart, where your feelings align with your thoughts. He provides hope, strength, and a sense of belonging, assuring us that we are never alone in this life's challenges and offering forgiveness and hope. So I'm going to ask you something that may be common sense, but maybe it's forgotten. Have you, has anybody actually asked God to comfort them? Or do you want to do it your own? Have you asked God to embrace you as life hauls its arrows towards you. Comfort does not mean that the troubles sometimes go away. God's role in terms of comfort is to provide us with a sense of peace, reassurance, and emotional healing through his unconditional love and presence in our life. We still have to go through it. We still have to go through this stuff. It's not just going to magically go away, but we have this assurance that we are comforted along the way. So how does God comfort us in practical ways? There's going to be a common theme around here. Through his presence. When we encounter him, we encounter him through his presence when we worship and pray. That is the reason why we sing songs here on a Sunday morning. So we can encounter his presence so we can be comforted and encouraged. Those lyrics are prayers and praise to God. When these songs are sung, we are inviting God to meet us. Just like we sang that song, here again, that last song. Because we're not enough unless he comes. When we sing about gratitude, love, and peace, comfort is right around the corner. And also through his word, in plain plain terms, read your Bible. It's pretty easy, right? So when one dives into his word and meditates on it, he will reveal his heart to you. You will find comfort in his words along with new revelations when you pray and meditate on those words. And also, you get comfort through his provisions and timing. When we pray in faith and align our desires with his, his provision and timing is always perfect. And along with that, you get comfort through other people. But I'm going I'm to talk about that later on. So how can we comfort others in Christ? Pray and read scripture together. There is something so raw and unifying when we come together in times of needed comfort while reading and praying with each other. And also listen without judgment. (laughs) Easier said than done, right? (laughs) Allow others to speak and express their feelings without condemnation. In doing this, we provide an element of emotional support that may have never been experienced before. Practice patience. Be patient with them through their journey. This may be, they may be ungetting, they may be navigating uncharted waters in their lives which they've never experienced before. And it's going to take healing and it's going to take a lot of time. God is definitely patient with me and with you. So we should practice that same kind of patience with others and offer a helping hand. We can, we can prepare meals, run errands, offer a ride, or provide financial support. But I also want to offer one piece of advice when we're dealing with comfort. Read the room. Because the same comfort that I would provide Jason is not the same comfort that I would provide RJ or my wife. Read the room. Because 
Every person is different. In essence, discernment in offering comfort involves sensitivity, empathy, and respect for the individual's unique needs and circumstances. This ensures that the comfort you provide is genuinely helpful and supportive because not everyone requires the same level of comfort. So along the lines of comfort is the next point. Is there any fellowship in the spirit? Fellowship is defined as close and meaningful relationships among believers in Christ. Acts 2.42 says, All believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and sharing in meals and to prayer. Hebrews 10.25 said, And let us not neglect our meeting together. 1 John 1 through 7 says, But if we are living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. And Romans 12 10 says, Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Fellowship holds great significance as it paves the way to nurture our faith, provide mutual support, and glorify God through our relationships. It is more than just social interaction. It's about having a spiritual connection and partnership among believers. There's actually something kind of special about coming together in person as one collective body, as we're doing today. In these moments, we not only build our relationships, but also strive to speak the truth in love and honesty, uplift and support each other, and find joy together, all while glorifying God as a united, loving community. And like I just said before, ways we can fellowship each other, Today, we're all coming together as one unified body to worship God. There's great strength in that worship and praying with each other. The body of Christ does not get built by one single person, but as one body. There's also small groups uh, that this is outside of now the regular church group. There's men's groups, prayer groups, women's groups. We also have groups for people that are 50 years or older. We have youth groups, journey Alpha. These are types of groups that can happen at the church building, in one's home, or in a coffee shop. It can happen anywhere. There's also special events like picnics, worship nights, and the breakfasts. I mean, I truly love the men's breakfasts. Those are great. And community service. We can volunteer as a group outside the church walls. That'd be missions or outreaches that go beyond just Manitowoc. It could be in Manitowoc, it could go beyond Manitowoc. So along the lines of missions and community service, the next portion is, are your hearts tender and compassionate? And this one's going to be, I'm going to spend a little bit more time on this one because this is where I think a lot of the big heart talk that I want to get into is going to lie. So by having our hearts tender and compassionate, I believe what is meant by this question is, how big is your heart? Are you showing love, mercy, and kindness to each other? Being tender-hearted is having the heart of Jesus, one that is not of stone, one that is forgiving, showing empathy and practicing patience and humility. So there are four examples that I have. I don't have them as slides, but there are four examples of that I want to um, go back to our first core value when we say it's all about Jesus. There's four things that Jesus showed about having a tender and compassionate heart. One is forgiveness. Jesus showed deep forgiveness even in the face of those who harmed him. And one of the most famous examples is when he was crucified. He was hanging on that cross and he prayed, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. Jesus also showed empathy. He demonstrated deep empathy by understanding and sharing in the pain and struggles of others as he wept with those who were grieving, just like when he cried with Mary and Martha at the tomb of Lazarus. Jesus practiced patience. He displayed extraordinary patience in his teaching. He taught his disciples and had to deal with their doubts and misunderstandings. And I doubt a lot. How about you? Does anybody else doubt sometimes? They have those feelings of doubt? I know... I know Chris said this a lot, but I'm glad (laughs) that there is so much authenticity and rawness within the Bible because you saw the struggles of all the disciples as they walked with Jesus, and they were physically with him, and he gave them so much patience. (sighs) There's hope for me. (laughs) 
<laughs> and Jesus also practiced humility. He humbled himself by washing his disciples' feet, a task considered beneath a master's dignity. So Colossians 3, 12 through 14 says, Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourself with a tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. Ephesians 4.32 says, Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God, Christ, has forgiven you. And 1 Peter 3 says, Finally, all of you should be of one mind, sympathize with each other, love each other as brothers and sisters, be tenderhearted, and keep a humble attitude. So based on these verses and examples given by Jesus, we should have big hearts filled with kindness, patience, and humility. And as stated at the beginning, one of the core values we have at this church is big heart over big church. Our communities need a church of big-hearted, ridiculously generous people willing to love and serve anybody. We should be focused on how we can serve and love each other as well as our community over the numbers of, the numbers of people that sit in this pew. But as we walk together, we need to be patient with each other and quickly forgive when someone does wrong. This is just like how has God has forgiven us, like a lot. He has forgiven us a lot. <laughs> Most importantly, we should wear our love on our sleeves. Love keeps us close like a big family, making us gentle and forgiving, just like how God forgives us because of Jesus. We should all agree and care for each other, sharing in good times and the tough times while staying humble. And this love is a selfless, unwavering commitment. And it's a verb. It's an act. To the well-being of others, rooted in compassion, guided by the principles of truth and love found in the life of Christ. And it's often demonstrated by speaking truth with grace. And this is how we can allow unity to grow and show Christ's love to everyone. So how can we cultivate this big heart mindset? One that is tender and compassionate towards others and even ourselves. So we talk about having tender and compassionate hearts towards each other. But do we even have that same mindset with ourselves? We can be our own worst critic, right? So I touched on the four things that Jesus exemplifies. I talked about forgiveness, empathy, patience, and humility. The first one I want to just touch base on a little bit more here is forgiveness. Now, I want to stress, forgiveness can be very, very difficult depending on the situation. So especially if the situation is traumatic or abusive. So I want to acknowledge and validate that your feelings are legit. Encourage you and encourage you to continue to seek guidance as you navigate that type of situation. So forgiveness is choosing to release someone rather than holding grudges. And that's what Jesus did on the cross. He chose to release them. He was dying. And he chose to release them of that. So a quote I have here is, Forgiveness does not excuse their behavior. Forgiveness prevents their behavior from destroying your heart. Forgiveness sets boundaries that you do not need to re-enter the toxicity. And when you forgive, it allows God to be the judge and not you. That might be freeing for some people right there. When you forgive, you are setting the boundaries. And you're choosing to not re-enter into that. And you're saying, God, I don't want to be the judge. You be the judge. So along with uh, forgiveness, Jesus showed empathy, right? He was kind with people. He offered, so one thing that we can do is offer support, like a listening ear, helping the needy or visiting the sick. We can also offer mentorship and discipleship. 
If someone is struggling, words of advice or call to action might be what they need. Now, that's different than comfort. When I talked about comfort, I was talking about having a listening ear without judgment. This is more of a, along the lines of if you have a relationship with somebody that they are okay with you offering mentorship and discipleship, it's okay to do that if you have that relationship. Remember, read the room. And we can also be um, showing tender and compassionate hearts by offering community service, as I stated um, before. So, put this all in one nice little bow here. This is my last page and a half. So, hey, we're on time. It's only 11 o'clock. All right. <clears throat> so the last point is one mind of unity and big hearts. So we just talked about encouragement, comfort, fellowship, and tender and compassionate hearts. And I believe these four points empower us to progress towards a unified community of believers. Moreover, it leads us to bigger hearts for the people within the church as well as our community. Remember, the main thing is about the main thing about this faith is the deity of Christ. He is our Savior, right? The cross is our foundation. Jesus is the main thing. Hence our first core value. It's all about Jesus. That is what this church is about. And we try to exemplify and speak the way he spoke and act the way he acted. Jesus is the main thing at Connection Church. See, we cannot have big hearts and be disunified. We cannot have big hearts and discourage somebody. We cannot see someone in pain and not offer comfort. We cannot isolate ourselves and do life alone. And hearts of stone will turn people away. If we have big, big hearts, we can have unity. Unity is like a tapestry of people who believe in the same God, and we get there by letting go of our pride, being humble, and tapping into his spirit daily through prayer, while showing love and respect to each other. In other words, a tough word, surrender. And I'll touch base on that in a minute. Unity is not just a wish, but a tangible reality when we live out these qualities. And unity is formed through a heart that has been put through the fire and refined. And this type of heart is surrendered to Christ and transformed by his love. And it extends past this physical church building. Because Jesus urged us to go out into all the world. And when we are intentional with our choices, we walk and we talk differently. We start walking with each other, we love differently. When we start, and we, then we start to see differently. If we choose to live in an echo chamber filled with people who think, talk, and see just as us, we fail to see others in the body of Christ and the world as brothers and sisters. We also fail to see the needs in our community. We need diversity. We need brothers and sisters from all walks of life, different ethnicities, different struggles, different pay grades, all rooted in the same faith, branches growing from the same vine. Life is not easy, nor is this faith journey. That is why we need each other in all of this. And this idea of surrender that I just spoke about a minute ago isn't simple, but it's easier when we place the focus of our lives on God rather than our wishes and human desires. And I am probably going to maybe make people mad, but that's okay. Once you get to know me a little bit more, I'm quite assertive. Um, I don't like to beat around the bush. I really don't. So... More disunity has occurred in the church because we get caught up with all the legality of our desires. The crazy thing is that Jesus struggled with the same issues with the Pharisees. Why do you think we have so many denominations? Peter struggled with, Peter struggled with stuff. So did Paul. So did Timothy. And we can bicker and complain about interpretations, which songs to sing, the collar of the chairs, or the wall decor. But I urge you to put it all down and agree on one thing, that Jesus is Lord. So can you see how all these things limit how big our hearts can be? 
if we're caught up in our own personal desires and our personal preferences. Now, I want to bring this back full circle from the introduction. So remember I talked about my, the verse that I read that caused me to cry. And I caught God's heart. I caught a glimpse of his heart. And I, I, I kind of imagine what that lady touched just the robe of Jesus and she was healed. Like, I, I felt like I was almost like that. <laughs> where I caught God's heart. And that verse was John 17, 23. And this is when Jesus is praying. I am in them, and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. And it was that word unity that caught me. And I've read this verse before, but it hit me differently. So three verses earlier in verse 20, it says, I am praying not for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. That means it's for you, people on live stream, and myself. Everything here is for us, even verse 23. When we say yes to Jesus, we receive the Holy Spirit as our guide. We become vessels for the Holy Spirit's dwelling. Jesus prayed for this unity, that the world will know God's love. And it begins with our surrender. Surrendering our egos at the door and surrendering to his ways. This is the only way we can even remotely have big hearts. And I want to plug the worship and tech team here. And we've had this discussion before, and I don't know how often it's been stated out here, but every one of those people back there in the tech team, worship team, like, it is an egoless team. Every week, we surrender ourselves and we say, what is good for glorifying Jesus? And that is where our hearts are at. And I really, really think that's the reason why the worship is so good. Yeah, we don't have a full band. We don't need a full band. We don't need, we don't, we can have two instruments up here, or one instrument, and a, a, a sea of voices, and it's going to be amazing. Why? Because Jesus is our one, number one focus. Everybody has a voice on the team. If we want to do something a certain way, somebody's feeling something, we allow it to pivot. What we practice on a Sunday morning for practice sometimes doesn't go the way it goes on a 10 a.m. service. The mappings don't always happen the same way that we practice. Why? Because God is moving, and we're all allowed to pivot. Whoever is leading can pivot. They have given, they were given the grace to do that. So as I conclude, this church is built differently. We strive to hold on to our core values. It's the heartbeat of this church. And I pray that it's your personal heartbeat as well. Now, for me and for the church, I think we'd rather have 100 people on fire for Jesus, going out and impacting our community, rather than 1,000 people just checking Sunday mornings off on their list. And I think that's, that's huge. I'd rather have 100 people on fire than 1,000 people who are cranky that'll go to lunch and be mean to their waitress and say, oh, I went to church. I'm good. That's disunity. A unified body is not limited to the, just the walls of this church, though. It starts in our hearts, our personal hearts, our individual hearts. And it spreads to your home. And then it goes to your workplace. And then it goes to the community and beyond. And when we, when we let these core values shape our daily lives, we become big-hearted, ridiculous, generous people who are willing to love and serve anybody. And that's what our communities need, a church of big hearts, not of big buildings. And this is hard. This is very, very hard. And that's why we talk about Monday through Saturday. What are you doing Monday through Saturday? Because you just can't come here Sunday and claim unity and then 
be your hermit Monday through Saturday. But remember, Jesus prayed for this unity. So as we say yes to Jesus, let's keep surrendering to him and growing in faith. And that's all about the personal growth that Joey spoke about last week. And it's the Monday through Saturday thing. It's all about surrendering daily, taking up your cross daily, renewing your mind daily. Daily. (laughs) Every day. And growing in faith, knowing that we need to reflect God's love to the world. It's a journey of surrender, growth, and love, and it begins with each one of us. And with big hearts, we can make a huge difference. So as I conclude here, this month we talked about our four core values. It's all about Jesus, the other six days, personal growth, and having a big heart over a big church. And then today I talked about encouragement, comfort, fellowship, and tender and compassionate hearts. And as I was finishing up my notes here, you know, this, with, uh, with some help with, you know, because when we do these messages, it's nice to have some um, conglomeration with some other leaders. One of the questions that I wanted to pose was, which one do you need improvement with? <laughs> like, just I, honestly, like, reflect. Open yourselves up to God and have him convict you on your next steps? Do we need to be more encouraging? Do we need to learn how to comfort people better? Do we need to fellowship more and get out of our comfort zones and network? Do we need to have tender and compassionate hearts? Maybe your main focus is to put Jesus more. Maybe it's to focus on how you're living your Monday through Saturday. What about personal and spiritual growth? So continue to seek after God and have him convict you. As we continue to seek this idea of unity within our church body and the community around us. Let's pray. God, we just thank you for this time. Lord, there was a lot to unpack there. Lord, I just thank you that you have laid this on my heart. And that you are moving this church into a direction where I personally think you want us to go. You want us to do this church thing a little bit more unorthodox. Lord, that you want to move us into 2024 in a completely different light where you are the main focus. Lord, that it is not about growing the church. It's about impacting our communities and impacting the world. Because we know your son didn't say, go and build a big church. He said, go and make disciples. Lord, and I pray that we can take these values and take what we've learned over the last four weeks and apply it to impact our homes, to impact our workplaces and our community. Lord, let us Find time every day to soak in you, in our own prayer closet, in our own prayer room, Lord, to seek after you wholeheartedly, surrendering every single day to renew our mind, to flush out all the junk that life and the news and the media can do to us. Lord, that we can be refreshed and you fill our cup and you can encourage us and you can comfort us, Lord, and you can have fellowship with us and you can show us your heart. Lord, fill our cups so we can fill other people's cups as well. Because we can't do this alone, Lord. We need you and we need each other. Lord, and I just pray that as everybody leaves today, Lord, that there is something that they can just take away, that they said, God, you spoke to my heart here. Lord, and I just pray that you can just work on them. And they can work with you. And Lord, that we can just love on each other as one body, as one fellowship in your name. Because you are the main thing in all of this. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. You are dismissed. Have a great Sunday. Have a great day.